deeply about the community. Now, you know, they they say things about me like, ah, oh, he's a moderate and he talk he doesn't talk the talk. And, and they say that because I talk about the community a lot. I talk about people. I talk about why I'm doing this because I care about the folks in my community. I care about the kids at Dallas Children's Hospital. I care about the folks that can go to the Dallas Zoo. I care about making sure we've got a good, strong election system. I care about these things, and I talk about people more than I talk about partisanship. I talk about progress in Texas rather than talking about uh, politics, and that makes me a little different. And I think sometimes that makes folks a little scared because they don't know what I really stand for. They don't know what my politics are, and they hear what they've heard about me from the Dallas Morning News or what they hear about me from my opponents and they think, that, that Jason, I'm not so sure. So this is a part of the talk I want to call Mythbusters. If you need to watch the Discovery Channel, you know there's a great show called Mythbusters. Mythbusters, they go in and they take a look <coughs> at myths that you might have heard of, everything from eating Pop Rocks and drinking Coke's going to blow your stomach up. To, to, but in that show, which I watch with my daughters who love it, mainly because they blow a lot of stuff up, but in that show, they dispel a lot of myths that you might have heard about different things. And so I want to talk tonight to this group because I know that there's a lot of misconceptions about me. And I know that people call me a rhino or a moderate. And I want to talk about that. I want to talk about issues that I know are important on everyone's mind here. I want to talk about the speaker's race. I want to talk about immigration. I want to talk about the kinds of issues that I know are driving a lot of thoughts about me and why I think some people say I'm not the true conservative in this race when I can tell you that I am. Well, let's start with the speaker's race. So I know there was a, a moment and the speakers are the last uh, the event that we had where uh, I was talking about the speaker. And the question was, who do you think would be the best leader? And I said something to the effect of, look, I, I looked at what happened down there and I said, and this is the quote, I think the speaker did a good job. And boy, let me tell you, that's all over YouTube, and everyone said, boy, that, that guy, he's a pro Strauss kind of guy. Well, let me tell you, I have made no commitment, no written commitment, no commitment to Speaker Strauss. I have not, in any capacity, said that I would be dedicated to him. Now, that doesn't mean I won't vote for him. It just means that I've made no written commitment, I've, I've issued no pledge card. Now, my opponent has the same identical position. He's made no commitment either, to my knowledge. Now, I've made no commitment to Brian Hughes. And Brian Hughes is a wonderful conservative and a man who I'm sure we will all respect. But I've made no commitment to him. He hasn't reached out to me. I haven't sat down with him. Now, like all candidates in this process, we get calls from the, the people who are going to be in charge. So I've talked to the speaker's folks. I've sat down with them and had a good conversation with them. I made no commitments. I said, look, I'm going to vote for the person and the speaker's role that will best enable me to achieve the objectives for people in 114. And that's my promise to the people here. I am a conservative, and I care about conservative principles, and I will stand by my conservative principles when I vote on legislation. But when it comes to voting for the speaker, I've got to vote for the person that I think will best enable me to achieve the objectives of people in this room. That may be huge. That may be Strauss. That may be somebody else who I don't know. But I don't know that yet. And so at this point, I want to make sure that everyone in this room knows that my position on this is that I'm going to cast my ballot for the conservative person that will achieve the objective best of the folks in this room. <coughs> now then folks say, well, look, he's not a principal. He would obviously vote for a guy who's not a principal guy because he wants to do what's best for politics. Well, I'm sent down to Austin to represent 114. I've got a job to do, and that job is to make sure that we achieve the objectives of our district and make our district stronger. I've got to do what's best for you people, and me, and my family, and the people that I will represent. And that may be one person, or it may be another. So the first myth I want to bust is the fact that uh, people say, I'm for Strauss, and he's not. Well, I think we're both for the person who's going to help us both do the best job for you in this room, and that's the difference. I mean, now that's that we're, we have an identical position, unless I'm mistaken, and he's, he's taken another position since the last time I've heard. Two, immigration. And I hear a lot about Jason Vialba and immigration. Boy, he, you know, he may be soft on that. Um, I heard he's pro-DREAM Act. I heard he's pro-amnesty. Well, let me tell you, I'm against the DREAM Act as it was proposed by the Democrats in the last session. I am anti Dream Act. I do not believe that that version of the Dream Act makes sense for America, 
it makes sense for Texas, or it makes sense for the people that I would, I won't be able to make that decision because I'm going to be in Austin, and I don't believe that the folks in Washington are right on that one. Now, I do support a version of, an, of, of something like that that my friend Marco Rubio is in favor of, and that would say this, look, if you finish four years in college, or if you're under fire in a foreign hot zone for two years, or serve in the United States Armed Forces, not the Coast Guard, not YMCA Night Law School, not, the actual armed forces, then I believe that you should be able to be on the path to citizenship. Uh, look, folks in this room may not agree with that. I don't perceive that as amnesty. I would do two things in addition to that. I would say no chain migration should come along with that. And if you receive the, that <laughs> path, it's, it's, uh, oh, no, no worries. It's a path to citizenship, not automatic citizenship. So. On the DREAM Act, the myth I want to bust, I'm not in favor of the DREAM Act as proposed by Democrats. Um, the DREAM Act in Texas, the Texas DREAM Act, should we provide tuition subsidies for folks who are, are not here legally? No, no. Uh, I don't agree with the, with the governor on that. And it's not a race issue. It's not an ethnic issue. It's an issue for me about resources. These are critically difficult times. We are all struggling with our economy. We have, re we have things that we have to do in Texas, and we can't afford to have resources allocated to non-Texans. It doesn't matter if they're from Oklahoma, it doesn't matter if they're from Norway, or it doesn't matter if they're from our friends south of the border. I believe strongly in border security and E-Verify. I am in favor of a generalized E-Verify program that would work in accordance with, with the accepted precedent on the issue. Um, you know, folks say, well, uh, he must be a moderate because he's endorsed by other moderates. Well, look, I get it about Mitt Romney. I know what people think about him. I happen to believe in 2008 that he was the most conservative candidate that was in that race. And if you look at the cast of characters at that time, he was. I'm a man who stands by principle. I'm a man who believed in him then. And I wasn't going to change merely because of the, of, of the fact that we had a new cast of characters this time. Does that make me a moderate? No, it makes me principled because I believe in standing up for the person I thought was the most capable businessman and the most thoughtful and the most careful and the person who had the best chance to send Obama back to Chicago where he belongs. And that is why I chose <coughs> Mitt and that's why he stands with me. And I think he's a wonderful man. He's a family man. He cares deeply about the issues that we care about. And he will fight to repeal and replace Obamacare and we'll make sure that he does a good job at that because we'll keep him, uh, keep him in check. Um, I'm endorsed by Kay Bailey Hutchison. Look, I believe that Kay was good for Texas. I know uh, there were some issues during the gubernatorial race. I supported her then, um, and I believe in what she was about. I, I know what they say about her. I, I hear that, but I don't believe that. I believe she's a trailblazer. I believe in strong Texas women, which she is. I believe she was wonderful for the state of Texas, and I'm honored and humbled to be supported by her.